banquet, Lord, you invite all who are poor without power or might, the wealthy as well. You call to come to. This is a hunger filled only by you. Come to the banquet, come by my side, fill up your hearts with me. Abide, you openly share all that you are. Come find your peace. Yes, come to the feast. Whenever I see one who is poor, one who is sick, or longing for more, someone who's lonely, by life overcome, I recognize you when you say, Come. Come with compassion, come now and give. Only by dying can you really live. Die to yourself, give up your heart. Come to my banquet from me, never part. Oh, Jesus, my master, I hear your sweet voice. You call me to share in all of your joys In a banquet of love, surrounded by friends A banquet of life that will never end Oh, come to the banquet, come by my side Fill up your hearts with me, abide You openly share all that you are Come find your
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He married us, heard our confessions, gave our children their first Holy Communion, talked to them about marriage, and married most of them, consoled us, buried our loved ones. He ate and drank with us, even cooked with us. He laughed and cried with us, played practical jokes on us. He sang, he danced for us, shared his poetry and paintings with us. He said mass in our churches and in our homes, led our Bible studies and barbecues. He gave us cars and money. He supported our brothers and sisters in foreign lands. He cared for our ailing priests. He prayed for us, sacrificed for us, and endured to the end for us. Good morning. I'm Michael McGlynn. I'm the fourth oldest uh, niece or nephew, so to speak, of 18 of us in the McGlynn family. I'm a nephew, I'm pretty sure of that, though. Of Monsignor Charles, Father Charles, Uncle Charlie, Brother Charlie, Charlie, Chaz. Upon returning to Kansas City in June of 05 to raise our family near family, as I began to work around the city, I was starting to be met with one comment continually, and it would go something like this. Are you related to Monsignor Charles? Upon my reply, a story, a laugh, a tear, something that would denote something significant that he had done for that person, a friend of theirs, a stranger that he saw, or a family member. I once asked Charlie, do you have any idea the impact that you've made to this faith community abroad in this area of the world? And he looked at me and said, Mike, they don't know me. Now, <laughs> you don't argue with Uncle Charlie, but I knew the tone in which he shared it. It was a tone of profound humility, for this was a man clear about his struggles in life. Charlie didn't want to take credit for what he did because he wanted the glory to go to God. But I believe that you actually did know him, and here's why. You staffed and supported his hot lunch programs at his poor schools and the public schools that he went to fight so hard for. You helped him manage the business affairs of his parishes, throw annual barbecue events because he knew you needed a break, a fundraiser. You reached deep into your pockets to support his poetry so that countless children and families in impoverished areas of Mexico could have an ambulance, dental care, clothing, roofs over their head, food, faith, and a future much brighter than before you came. You fed him, you bought him beautiful shirts and sweaters, and even bottles of expensive drink, and some of which he shared with us. <laughs> Truly, every Christmas, when we would make our way in and out of those rectories, we would see visible signs of your love for him in the cards and the notes and the gifts that decored the rectory. You entrusted your children to him for their first communion, their first confession, and hopefully it was their first confession and then their first communion, their first marriage, and those were usually the last marriages too. You buried with him your beloved, and you even entrusted the burial of some of your children to him. You gave him your time as you met for his Bible studies, his retreats, committee meetings, and campaigns. You gave him your worries and your fears and your regrets in that beautiful sacrament of God's mercy, confession. And you shared your heart in counseling sessions, late night crisis calls, and quick stories 
whenever you would run into him somewhere. You gave him your attention at mass, whether his poem or his homily touched you or not. You gave him your screams and your laughter as you would enter the rectory late at night and he would greet you out of the dark with a gorilla mask or some other prank. Because he wanted to remind you about the best parts of what it is to be a human and what God created us for. And you continue to seek him out after he chose to retire because he knew you deserved a full-time pastor as his health was turning against him. You wrote him, called him, dressed him, washed his clothes, gave him rides, fed him, washed him, lifted his body in and out of his bed, tended to his numerous medical needs as his body failed him, but his continuance to do so even baffled his doctors. Through it all, you carried him in your heart. You did know him. And in so doing, you came to know more, our blessed Lord. Charlie attracted us to the faith because Charlie was confident in God. And it was this confidence in God's goodness, God's mercy, that he wanted us know, most to know about our blessed Lord. He truly wanted us to be reassured because he loved you. And he loved being a priest because he loved being around people. He loved being around the humanity that God created in us because it reminded him of what this was truly all about. His passing on the threshold of the eve of Christ the King this last Friday was not a coincidence or some random happenstance. I truly believe that as our liturgical year winded down and God chose to bring him to himself on that day, it was Charlie's last sermon, his last poem, his last word. And it wasn't directed at his creativity or the sound of his beautiful voice or laughter. It was directed at the heart he loved, the heart he adored, the heart he consecrated on this altar, and the heart that he sought to give you through and through with every fiber and being of his energy and hope and faith and trust in God. Because he knew that you were worth it, that life was worth it, and it's why he never gave up. Baffling everyone around him, we couldn't believe that he would keep going and going and going. And finally, finally his body did give out. And so what is there to say at this point? other than, thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you for giving us all that you had. Thank you for pointing us to what really matters in life. Thank you for showing us that we don't have to be afraid, especially in the moments when we have to snuggle near our Lord in the cross. Because Christ the King is whom we are journeying to. Christ the King who has power over everything, all the messiness of our lives, all the hopes, the fears, the aspirations, but most of all, Christ the King who has power over death. We are confident today that Charlie sings with the angels a place high heights in heavens because he loved much. He trusted much, and he pointed the way. He pointed the way for us. Thank you, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving him to us. Mother Mary, thank you for cradling him by your side these so many years. He loved you so much. Thank you, his guardian angels. You did well. Uncle Charlie. None of us deserve the final word in your eulogy. So the final word will go to this holy mass. As your blessed son and all the angels and saints will speak to us and remind us of what is rightfully ours and what you so desperately want to give to us, the fullness of yourself. 
Uncle Charlie gave us a glimpse of your fatherly face. Thank you. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Father Charles died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. In baptism, Monsignor Charles received the sign of the cross, may now sh share in Christ's victory over death. be able to celebrate the Eucharist. And so let us now, as we gather, open our hearts to be nourished with the sacrament of life and with the word of life. And let us pray. Lord God, you chose our brother, Father Charles, to serve your people as a priest and to share the joys and burdens of their lives. Look with mercy on him and give him the reward of his labors the fullness of life promised to those who preach your holy gospel. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. 
The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if before men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. treat us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our faults. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. As far as the east is from the west, so far from us does he remove our transgressions. As a father has compassion on his children, the Lord's compassion is on those who fear him. The Lord is kind.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word of God. Be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but following their own desires and insatiable curiosity will accumulate teachers and will stop listening to the truth and will be diverted to myths. But you be self-possessed in all circumstances, put up with hardship, perform the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha had heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. And Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life, and whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord.
First of all, I want to thank Michael for that beautiful reflection that you gave on your Uncle Charlie. And as I was listening to you there, I, you know, certainly you covered so many things within his life, but I, I really think that a lot of Charlie's spirit is within you, that a lot has rubbed off as uh, you carry on that same spirit of enthusiasm and joy and of faith. And thank you for sharing so beautifully Charlie's life with us. And today we, we do come together to celebrate the life of a wonderful friend, a wonderful priest, a wonderful human being. We come to celebrate certainly his 78 years in which he lived on this earth, in which he enriched family and friends, in those 50, 30 years of priesthood. What a tremendous gift those have been. But we come really not so much to celebrate what has been as to celebrate what is now. For a funeral is not just a remembrance of the past, but rather it is a living in the present and in the future. And we come to celebrate Charlie's faith in the Lord Jesus, that he had a tremendous faith in Christ. And that faith in Christ was not for this life only, but rather for it was for eternal life. That's what kept Charlie going day in and day out. That was the hope that he had. Yes, we grieve his passing, but we never grieve without hope. We never grieve without an awareness that death does not have the final say, but rather life does eternally. That through the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, we have that promise of eternal life if we but open ourselves to that wonderful grace of new life in Christ. What a tremendous blessing and Charlie enjoyed in this life as he lived that life of faith, that life of trust in God's love and care for him. And I know I was deeply touched myself with the witness of his life these last few years when maybe he gave us the strongest message, the strongest homily, when he accepted so much infirmity, so much weakness, being joined with the sacrifice of Christ. That was a beautiful gift to all who knew him and all who could experience the fact that he carried on in spite of pain, in spite of being humbled, in spite of the challenges that he had. And what a beautiful gift that is. And we know that Charlie loved scripture. He loved to preach, he loved to teach, he just loved to live scripture himself. And so as I was thinking about this homily today, I thought, what are some scripture passages that I would think about in relationship to Father Charles? The gospel was one of those, where Martha is there with Jesus, and Martha is disappointed that Jesus wasn't there at the time that Lazarus died. But Martha still had faith. She still had trust. And Jesus says to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who lives and believes in me will never truly die. Do you believe that? That's a question that is posed to each and every one of us. It was posed to Charlie, and he answered that with the gift of his life, with the gift of his, his total self that yes, I do believe. He had a tremendous knowledge and love of Jesus. Some, in some ways, I envied that in him, that he just had that real affectionate love for Christ Jesus and that trust and that confidence in God's love. And that was the reason why he responded to that call to become a priest, that invitation that Christ had given him, and that was the second love of his life was being a priest and being able to celebrate that Eucharist. And I think he really had the sixth chapter of John memorized. And in that chapter, Jesus says, the one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I'll raise him up on the last day. That's the promise that Jesus makes to each and every one of us. And it was to share that Eucharist with others as well as with himself that Charlie devoted his life. 
He loved being a priest. He loved being able to share the Eucharist, to share forgiveness, to share peace and counsel with others. That was the joy of his life, was to live in that way. I think sometimes people wonder, why does anyone ever choose to become a priest? And I'll tell you why. Because we fall in love with Christ in a special way. Charlie fell in love with Christ. And that's the reason he responded to that call of Jesus, come, follow me. That was his life, was to follow the Lord Jesus, to follow his spirit, his attitude, his sense of joy, to share his peace and his love. Charlie lived the Beatitudes in a very special way. He saw the Beatitudes as a manifestation of the law of the new covenant, something for all of us to strive after, of living those Beatitudes. And as I look at those, I think any one of them could apply to Charlie. But to me, two in particular. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice for justice. He really advocated for the poor. He advocated for the marginalized. That was the reason why he got on the draft board in Wyandotte County to give conscientious objectors a fair hearing during the Vietnam War. That's the reason he ran for Board of Education in order to acquire better education for those who were marginalized, those who were neglected and even to be able to have a hot lunch program in the public schools. That's the reason he ran for that. That's the reason why he marched for civil rights and why in his years he took, tried to promote an end to discrimination, a greater justice and love for others. He truly sought justice, right relationships. The second beatitude is blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. Charlie showed huge, huge mercy in his life. He showed a, a tremendous amount of care for others, family and friends, certainly, but also for the poor, the needy, that tremendous gift of mercy. And mercy is not pity. Mercy is tender love. It's a willingness to truly just pour out a life in service of others. How much mercy, how much tender love Charlie has shown. And the reward is to have mercy in turn. And I know Charlie relied upon the mercy of God, that, that how important the realization of the mercy of God was to him and really to each and every one of us. Yes, Charlie has fought the fight. He's proclaimed the gospel. He's lived the message. And now there awaits for him, as for St. Paul, that crown in heaven. It's that realization that brings us comfort, that brings us hope. And it is because of God's tremendous love for each and every one of us and God's wondrous mercy that we have that confidence. In his life, Charlie, in a very special way, learned the school of holiness from the people with whom he interacted. Certainly his family, he loved his family so much. He loved each and every one of you with a tremendous love. He loved your parents, and I know especially your mother. Margaret was so special, special to him. But he, he loved all of you. He loved being with you. He loved being able to celebrate the baptisms, the first communions, the, the weddings, and yeah, even the funerals. That he was, that, that brought him life and joy. He was always telling me about, oh, I've got a baptism with so-and-so, da, da, da. And I said, Charlie, with your clan, you already have your own parish right there. <laughs> but that was a beautiful thing, and that gave him so much joy and so much happiness. And he loved being Irish. <laughs> He had a tremendous pride in his Irish heritage. When he and I traveled to Ireland together a couple times, oh, he was in his element, believe me. He just exulted in being there. 
and I think that little poteen helped as well, but it was a time of joy and happiness for him to share in that, and what a privilege it was for me uh, to experience Charlie in that environment, in that caring. His love for family, and his love and appreciation, and I will to say this, just very down to earth, for Mike, Pat, Don, you were so very special to him. Just a week ago, he said, I don't know what I'd do without my brothers. Yeah, you guys have been phenomenal. Welcome him into your homes. Took him to endless doctor's appointments. Did his laundry. Any errand that needed to be done, you guys were there. And he was so very grateful to you for that. Charlie loved his fellow priests. He loved the priesthood, obviously, but he loved his fellow priests. He loved all of you guys. He loved being with you. He loved the camaraderie. I know I don't particularly uh, like a couple of our gatherings, but Charlie and I used to go around and around. He said, Charlie, he says, Tom, that's so important. And it is, it's important. The camaraderie that is there. He loved conception workshop. He loved the retreat. He loved just being together. I think he loved taking money from you in the poker games. <laughs> I, I think he, he just loved the experience and, and being able to enjoy uh, his fellow priests, his brother priests. He was so very special to him. And he really wanted to show that, that love and that camaraderie. And who of us has not many times been said, hey, bud, you know, how you doing, bud? That's a sign of affection for Charlie, to reach out in that way, to, to care for others. And I know he had a tough job as the vicar general for clergy. That was not an easy job, but he tried to do it with a tremendous amount of love and of caring. I know I was privileged uh, for almost 50 years. We were in the same priest prayer group, support group. And I know how much he loved getting together every month, but he truly enjoyed each and every one of you as a brother priest. He truly embraced you and loved you. And I know he's very grateful for all the love and the support that you have given to him. And to all of you who've been with Father Charles over the years, who've known him as a pastor, as a priest, that uh, you have not only been an opportunity for him, to exercise his priestly ministry, but also to grow in holiness himself. We priests look to you as the laity. You're the ones who really inspire us. <laughs> Believe me, you inspire us with your faith. You inspire us with your love for, for God. You inspire us with your desire to share Christ within your families and your homes, your marriages, to bring Christ into your work. You truly inspire us so greatly. And I know that Charlie drew so much inspiration from all of you in the life that you live, and I thank you for that. I thank you for the ways in which you have enriched his life and all of your lives of your priests. You truly are a blessing to us. And as we come to this conclusion today, I would just like to borrow from a very good friend of mine, for I have a little prayer for you. Only you have perfect love, Jesus, Savior, Lord. You alone love perfectly, you whom we adore. Our love is but a shadow here of the love that is to come when we will rise above the skies and with you be truly one. Help us not mistake the truth or think that we have it all this world is not all there is, and death is not final. There is another world for us, our true and certain home, to be with you forevermore, never to be alone. So help us all to be detached from things which will decay and to worship you alone, not the things that you have made.
Let us now approach our Heavenly Father and ask for those things that we need as we gather here to draw strength from the Lord. Your responses hear our prayer. In baptism, Father Charles received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our brother Charlie was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our brother Father Charles shared in the priesthood of Jesus Christ, leading God's people in prayer and worship. Bring him into your presence where he will take his place in the heavenly liturgy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. We pray especially for the parents of Monsignor Charles, his father, John, and his mother, Margaret. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Father Charles who seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering from emotional or physical pain, that may, they may know the example of Father Charles in accepting their condition and look to the cross as an example of Christ's love for us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we humbly present you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Father Charles, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life has changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial, of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Joseph our Bishop, James our Bishop Emeritus, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. And listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Father Charlie, who is called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh all those who have died and transform our lowly bodies after the pattern of his own glorious body. For our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passage through this life, give time and witness to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy, enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, and you'll wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, that we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Red of light. 
drink the wine of love. Bread of the angels, the flesh of forever has nurtured. Oh. 
Let us pray. Lord God, whose son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother, Father Charles, may come to, eter to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Are there any announcements? So as we offer these final prayers today, um, as Father Charles reminded us often, that death is not a barrier, but through prayer we can continue to meet and to pray for and to experience the presence of those that we love. And especially as we, uh, we meet each other, those that have gone before us here at the Eucharist. Um, Thanks, Michael, for your beautiful eulogy, and we're grateful to all the brothers McGlynn and their family. Uh, you truly were a very important part of who Charlie was, and uh, the brothers, you helped sharpen each other in many ways. I know one of the things he was most proud of that his brother, the English literature professor, called his poems, prayers, doggerel, but he was proud about how much money he was able to raise with that doggerel. <laughs> but it was just one instance of, of the great um, love and support, joy, that he experienced uh, from his family. So thank you for sharing your brother, your brother-in-law, your uncle with us. Um, Archbishop Keller is with us uh, in the penalty box in the back there <laughs> for keeping him safe. Um, but Monsignor Charles was such an important part of the life of the Archdiocese. And uh, his leadership as a pastor, he was a tremendous pastor, but also his service to his brother priest, both with Archbishop Jim and um, and during my time uh, has really had a tremendous impact on our presbyterate 
and on the spirit within our, our presbyterate. So we're in his debt for that. He loved the priesthood and he loved his brother priest and served them well. And just uh, a final thought about him. Uh, one of my favorite biographies of St. Thomas More is entitled Born for Friendship. And I, I think that could be ascribed to Charlie as well. He was truly uh, a friend to so many. Many gathered here, many up joining us live stream. And uh, he had this great capacity um, uh, to, to build community and friendship with others. And in the process, you know, I think to enrich their life through his wisdom and his faith. He had a special friendship with um, Monsignor Tank, and thanks um, for the homily today. Um, I think their friendship was one long argument in some ways. <laughs> we used to see that at the vicars, at the, uh, our administrative team meeting, they would be point counterpoint oftentimes, and so we'd get both points of view. But what a beautiful example of friendship, Tom, uh, that you and Charlie shared, a great example of encouraging each other and supporting each other um, and helping each other uh, both to be extraordinary and excellent priests and great Christians, great examples of our Catholic faith. So Charlie, was, he, wherever he was, there was joy. And um, at our priest gatherings, when we would have the informal entertainment, uh, there would be a chant that would go up at some point, Charlie, Charlie, this was his cue to come up and tell one of his Irish jokes. <laughs> and even if he had said it many times before, just the way he said it was very entertaining always. So I think if we chanted, he might rise up, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll not tempt him on this. So let us... Uh, offer these final prayers um, and in thanksgiving um, for a wife, a life well lived and uh, pray that his example, uh, the thing that would give him most joy is if in some way our gathering today would draw us all closer to Jesus and more committed as he was committed to follow him and to serve him with our lives. brother, Father Charles, has fallen asleep in Christ, confident in our hope of eternal life. Let us commend him to the loving mercy of our Father and let our prayers go with him. He was adopted as God's son in baptism and was nourished at the table of the Lord. May he now inherit the promise of eternal life and take his place at the table of God's children in heaven. Let us pray also on our own behalf that we who now mourn and are saddened may one day go forth with Father Charles to meet the Lord of life when he appears in glory. May choirs of angels lead you into paradise and may the mind
that you may enter into everlasting rest. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother, Father Charles, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Charlie in this life. They are signs to us of, our, of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help those who remain to comfort one another with the assurance of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And Charlie had a great devotion to our Blessed Mother, and as is our custom, we invite our priests to uh, pray together in song. In peace, let us now take our brother, Father Charles, to his place of rest. <laughs> 